Anybody who heard me yesterday knows I'm an actress uh, and a costume designer, and I know how to do a cold reading for an audition. I have not read this document because I don't want to wait. Woo! You also know that I can cry on a dime, so I will try to be as clear as I can. You do not yet have this on your um, cell phones and your emails. The Senate will get it and they will send it out to everybody they can. This is a grassroots effort. We are not using the bulk email of the university. So are you ready? Yes. yes. In 1816, our founder, Thomas Jefferson, said, as new discoveries are made, new truth discovered, and manners and opinions change, with the change of circumstances, institutions must advance also to keep pace with the times. We are all aware that, the UVA, that UVA needs to change, and for the past two years, I have been working to do just that. You know that I is Terry Sullivan, don't you? <laughs> Apparently, the area of disagreement appears to be just how that change should occur and at what pace. I certainly want to take some time and talk about the many changes I have made because they are significant. But first, I need to make one thing clear. The current reaction by the faculty, staff, and students on and off grounds and among the donors and alumni to my impending departure is not something I have stirred up. I have made no public statement. I have done my best to keep the lowest possible profile. I have fulfilled previous commitments at the White House and elsewhere in Washington, and I have visited with friends in another state. I have not even responded to the innumerable people who have reached out to me personally and demonstrated their love for this great institution. I did not cause this reaction in the last 10 days. But perhaps the reaction speaks to the depth of the connections I have made in the last 22 months. Through all, through all of the last 10 days, my overriding concern has been the welfare of the University of Virginia. I have described as an increment, I've been described as an incrementalist. It is true. Sweeping action may be gratifying and may create the aura of strong leadership but its, intended, its unintended consequences may lead to costs that are too high to bear. There has been substantial change on grounds in the past two years, and this change is laying the groundwork for greater change. But it has all been carefully planned and executed in collaboration with the vice presidents, deans, and representatives of the faculty. Yeah. This is the best, most constructive, most long-lasting and beneficial way to change a university. Mm -hmm. Until the last 10 days, the change at UVA has not been disruptive change. It has not been high-risk change. Corporate style and top-down leadership does not work in a great university. Yeah. Sustained change with buy-in does work. UVA is one of the world's greatest universities. Being an incrementalist does not mean that I lack vision. My vision was clearly outlined in my strategic vision statement. It encompasses the thoughts developed by me and my team as, what, as to what UVA can become in the 21st century. And parts of it were incorporated into the budget narrative that you adopted last month. Meaning divorce. <laughs> Faculty, 
One of the greatest strengths of UVA is our outstanding faculty. As a tenured member of faculty, I have tried to view the campus not only from the president's chair, but from the faculty's lectern, and it has been an amazing and rewarding experience. Nearly every faculty member here has uh, the opportunity, excuse me, nearly every faculty member here has opportunity costs for staying and has attractive options elsewhere. The faculty we most need to keep have many options elsewhere. Most of the faculty could earn more in some other organization, academic or non-academic. They stay to participate with other faculty of the highest grade and to interact with students who'll be, who will be the leaders of the next generation. Their financial sacrifices have their limits. Of course, the faculty must be appropriately compensated. But at the end of the day, money alone is not enough. The faculty must believe that they can do their best work here. They must believe in the future here. At any great university, the equilibrium to pull between the desire to stay and the inducements to leave is delicate. Rapid change rapidly upsets, upsets this delicate equilibrium. Already in the last 10 days, we have lost faculty to other universities. Unfortunately, we are well past the usual hiring season in most disciplines. But deans and provosts at every peer institution are setting aside funds now to raid, thank you very much, to raid the University of Virginia next year given the current turmoil on our campus. Clearly, we have financial challenges. Our net financing from the state has been steadily cut for two decades despite the efforts of the governor and general assembly to modestly reverse that trend. Both political and market forces limit the tuition we can charge. We are addressing these changes in multiple ways. The academic mission is central and must be protected. Strategic cutting and large scale cost savings have therefore been concentrated in non-academic areas and these areas have become notably leaner and more efficient. The historic practice at UVA was that any necessary budget cuts in the academic areas were directed by the central administration, often by a non-academic officer. And because that officer often, most inevitably, lacks sufficient information to make detailed choices, these cuts were usually applied across the board, the most non-strategic approach to cutting. I undertook to change this approach. In the last two years, we've been working to implement a new internal financial model. This is no technical accounting matter. The new model would empower deans, improve their financial incentives, and hold them accountable for the results. Each dean knows his or her own school far better than the central administration can ever know it. Yes. But the deans have had limited financial planning tools, and if they did find a way to cut costs or a creative way to raise revenue without raising tuition, there was no assurance that they would be keeping the savings or the revenue. We expect better financial decisions, new cost savings, and where necessary, more strategic program cuts from the new internal financial model. The budgeting changes we have already set in place this year have created transparency and accountability and dispelled the perception that politics drives the internal allocation of resources. <laughs> the, budget meetings, the budget meetings that we initiated this year provide the opportunity for the provost to work with deans on priorities for strategic investment. And often he discovers that multiple deans have a similar idea and that a co-investment strategy will produce greater gains at lower total costs. We are making a portfolio of these small bets which cumulatively will build strength in important areas of teaching and research. 
This approach acknowledges that we are neither persistent nor omniscient. No single initiative will do serious damage if it doesn't work out. One example already underway is being that is being expanded is quantitative collaboration, which addresses stimulation and predictive statistical models and the challenges of massive data sets that exceed the limits of our analytic tools. Others that are well along in the planning and funding stages include the Contemplative Sciences Center, which has broadened considerably from an original donor proposed to an exciting synergy among faculty from the medical school, the College of Nursing, Asian Studies, Religious Studies, and other departments. Our international focus, we are broadening and deepening the connections among our international faculty, especially those who study China and Africa. These are not areas that should be siloed within academic units, but there should be ways for scholars across grounds to interact on them. My recent trip to China was used as a way to integrate these scholars' expertise and help us chart a course for the future. Environmental stability is a topic that excites faculty and students from nearly every school, including the college, architecture, engineering, tear down departments, but instead they provide ways for faculty from different departments to interact, enriching the departments but also allowing new activities. We have taken similar initiative with respect to faculty compensation. We found funds for a 2% faculty pay raise last year, not enough but the first raise of any kind in four years. Equally important, we instructed deans not to give the 2% raise across the board, but to allocate all raise money on the basis of merit. These re this rewards our most valuable faculty and improves the incentive structure for all faculty. A dramatic top-down reallocation in our general fund simply to show that we are changing or that we are not incremental seems to me fiscally imprudent, highly alarming to the faculty, and unfair to students who expect to get a broadly inclusive education here. I have chosen a low risk and more conservative strategy because I am accountable to the taxpayers and the tuition payers. were to embark on a course of deep top-down cuts, there would also be difficult questions regarding what to cut. A university that does not teach the full range of arts and sciences will no longer be a university. it will no longer be respected as such by its former peers. <laughs> Faculty collaborate both within disciplines and across disciplines. In the nature of things, many of these collaborations are not even known to the central administration. If we cut from the top down without consulting the affected faculty, a cut in one department may have wholly unintended consequences in another department that we are trying to build up. Nor can we always predict which kind of knowledge will be of the greatest import in the future. Before September 11th, Few of us understood just how important Arabic and other Middle Eastern and Central Asian languages would become to our students, the nation, and the national security. Suppose we had eliminated some of those languages because of low enrollment or other fiscal considerations before 2001, we would be scrambling to recreate them now. Beyond finance, there are many other innovations I have undertaken and about which you regu were regular up here. Be take two, three. Beyond finances, there are many other innovations I have undertaken and about which you are regularly briefed. 
We conducted national searches to fill our two executive vice presidencies with talented administrators. No president can act alone. Filling these positions was essential to further progress. We have increased the emphasis on the unglamorous but critical task of patient safety in our hospitals. We are We are undertaking or evaluating strategic alliances with other health care providers to strengthen our position in the face of a changing and more complex and difficult market for health care. We have taken initiatives to improve student safety. This is, an, uh, this is obviously a matter of great concern to parents. These initiatives include the day of dialogue during my first months on grounds. And the follow-up from that day, and a new policy on sexual misconduct that is considered a national model. We greatly expanded our MLK Day celebration, both... We greatly expanded our MLK Day celebration, both as an, as an additional educational activity for our students, but also as a way to link the community with the community of Charlottesville. We have worked with the governor, with Higher Education Advisory Commission created by the governor, and with the legislature to implement the Higher Education Opportunity Act. We are gradually increasing enrollment, preserving the quality of instruction with the initiative pre-funded by the General Assembly and have implemented early action in admissions, increasing our ability to compete for the very best students. We have created the 4VA, we have created the 4VA Telepresence Consortium with the state, Cisco, Virginia Tech, George Mason, and James Madison that uses sophisticated technology to share courses and other resources. Examples are advanced Mandarin and national security policy. I would have become the consortium's chair on July 1. Wow. There is room for carefully implemented online learning in selected fields, but not online instruction. Excuse me, but in, excuse me, let me say this again. There is room for carefully implemented online learning in selected fields, but online instruction is no panacea. It is surprisingly expensive has limited revenue potential, and unless carefully managed, can undermine the quality of instruction. We have initiated the Who's Well program, which in the long run will save money on our employee health care plan. In this very rotunda in which you are sitting, in front of which you are standing, I initiated and secured funding for the critical repair of the roof. Much more must be done to complete this, and we have a plan in preparation to raise the funds. Fundraising takes time. A new president first has to meet donors and establish trust and rapport. Instability is as alarming to donors as it is to the faculty, and in the last few <laughs> instability is as alarming to donors as it is to faculty, and in the last few days, you are already seeing the impact. Yes. <laughs> Fundraising. Fundraising during my tenure has been rebounding from the effects of the recession and the presidential transition. Since I came on board in 2010, philip philan philanthropic, sorry, philanthropic cash flow has increased by 15.6%. New campaign commitments to date average 17.1 million per month, 
in FYI 210 and averaged 26 point, excuse me, I'm going to say that all again. New campaign commitments to date averaged 17.1 million per month in 2010 and averaged 26, 24.6 million through April 30th of 2012. A number, a number you may not know yet is that we raised $44 million from our reunion classes at Reunions Weekend. Wow. Beyond fiduciary matters related to the budget model and fundraising, the university's new administrative team has had a considerable human impact. If you want to know about the impact on faculty and its morale and energy and commitment to UVA, go outside and talk to them. not merely a term described by a code that applies to our students. <laughs> we equally need a community of trust between faculty and administration and among our leadership teams. Yes. 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 Trust does not mean an absence of disagreement but it requires that disagreements be frankly discussed. No matter how accomplished he or she may be, a president cannot read minds. When you choose a new president, I tell him or her, excuse me, Again, no matter how accomplished he or she may be, a president cannot read minds. When you choose a new president, tell him or her what you are thinking. Ah. Wow. Finally, I would like to thank you for the great honor of leading the University of Virginia. In only 22 months, Doug and I have felt warmly embraced by the university and by Charlottesville and Albemarle County. Whatever the problems this university may be facing, make no mistake, this is one of the world's great universities. Every day on ground, great ideas are pursued, outstanding books are written, patients' lives are saved, often after dis despair had set in. The products and industries of tomorrow are being crafted in our laboratories, and the leaders of the 21st century fill our classrooms and seminar rooms. One of the greater duties of the president is to listen carefully to the needs and aspirations of the community. as being the center of learning. But we also have the graduation at the other end of the lawn, a place that was once wide open to the skies and the mountains and the future, as a symbol of where we wish our students to move and look and dream and create 
the world they believe is possible for everyone. I respectfully request that you turn to the future now and look to that future. Please do so. We stand in solidarity as the University of Virginia. Thank you. is that um, the reason George is not standing with us is he got a, a, a notice that they were going into open session. And if he wished to be there, which he, had, he was invited to be there earlier today, Chris and I were also invited, but chose to take these roles that we have taken today to lead you and to be with you and for me to be with President Sullivan. So um, we don't have any idea how much longer this may go. The fact that they closed the doors because the rotunda must close at their, at their uh, announced time. Uh, it has to do with insurance and safety issues. Uh, we have no idea what is happening in there or what may continue to happen. We invite you to stand by in case they come forward and speak something. They may have attempted, and I was, what was I doing? I was filibustering here at the mic. Um, <laughs> So um, we, actually, we actually would like to, um, the Executive Council and the entire Faculty Senate would like to thank you for support. Know that this uh, continues. We're, that we're, this is not over. Yeah. Okay. This is not over. that we are pledged to opening and continued dialogue for the future of the university and the future of collaboration between the administrators and the board of visitors and the faculty. And uh, we will continue with whatever grassroots uh, things we can do. The, if you get an email, pass it forward. If you haven't gotten an email, ask the people you got it from last time. Have you heard anything from us? There will be plenty of things coming up on the Senate website. You can usually go there to figure out where we are um, okay? Thank you all for everything.